Okay, starting off with the Lone Star, um, we're going to demonstrate my basic clean tone. And the signal path at this point on, on, my, on my number one uh, switch there is the guitar running into a Carl Martin compressor. Let me go back and show you that real quick. Uh, through the GCX, I can turn the compressor on and off in front of, the, in front of uh, the amplifier. And when I have the clean channel on, I'm generally, I'm, I'm generally switching that on as well. So it'll be the Carl Martin compressor um, into the front of the amp. And in the effects loop, we actually have two Deluxe Memory Man echoes chained together. Um, and I usually have them set at uh, varying delay times, one being around 500 milliseconds and one being around 350 milliseconds. If I'm running stereo in the studio, that's usually the kind of uh, delay ratio I have going on. Like on the Resolution CD, that was pretty much it. I'd be running um, a couple of different tape echoes set at, at roughly those, those settings. But for live, for uh, reliability and consistency, I like these uh, electroharmonics and it sounds like this. You hear the two different delay times and... So it, it's, it's, a, it's a really pleasing echo sound. It's got a little bit of chorusing on the repeats themselves, which emulates to me the sound of the wow and flutter of the tape. When it's just a little bit out of tune, it just adds this wonderful chorusing sound. You can hear. Okay, so, and this is the type of sound for, for songs when I'm playing live, uh, things like uh, Cry For You, that type of thing. That basic tone there, or I'll use it um, for things like uh, Electric Gypsy. Depending on the mood, sometimes I'll run it nice and clean, just straight in like that. Sometimes I'll add a little dirt to it. I'll put the BB preamp in front of, uh, in front of the amp and you'll get a little extra gain. like that. So that's that's basically how I'm using the clean channel. It's it's very it's very Fender American clean in uh, in the basic design but it adds a lot, I think a lot more warmth and a lot less harshness in the top end. Um, I can hit the front end of it pretty hard and it doesn't really crap out per se. It just it, has, it still retains its depth and when I add a little gain to it it still has its clarity but Both of these amps, they both really love pedals. Um, every classic amp always has a great tone on its own, but when you can find one that also is flexible enough that when you want to alter things just a little bit with that classic pedal favorite of yours, whether it's the Tube Screamer or, or any of the classics, the Fuzz Face, not all amps sound great with certain pedals, but uh, with the Lone Star, I've really found favor with a certain couple of pedals. The amp sounds great on its own. You kick in a little extra every now and then, and it's, it's beauty. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, let's move. Let's move over to the uh, the lead channel, and this is the channel of the Lone Star that, when I first played this amp, maybe four or five years ago, um, I told the story earlier where I was, I was already endorsing another amp company, and we were working on a signature amp, and um, things were okay. But my, my good friend Steve Mueller said, oh, "We've got this new amp, and you really need to try it." So I just took it out to a gig without even really having spent any time on it. Took it to the gig, and I plugged in the lead channel, and heard this tone. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nothing in front of it, there was this huge, warm, fat tone that I was struggling to get out of any amp, much less, you know, just plugging straight in and getting it immediately out of the amp. Let's step back and let me, let me tell you of a couple of secrets of how I run this. Thing.